Um, so basically, I'm originally from Norway, uh, but I moved to the UK to, to study engineering. So I did a four-year master's degree in engineering in the north of England. And then I moved to London in 2002 and started working as a strategy consultant. I spent two and a half years doing that before moving into finance proper and, and started a job at Morgan Stanley in, in equity research. Uh, after six and a half years there, uh, I then moved to the Norwegian Sovereign Wealth Fund, Norges Bank Investment Management, also in London, and worked as an uh, equity analyst slash portfolio manager in the London office. And more recently, I spent two and a half years working as the head of China for Norges Bank Investment Management, investing in both onshore domestic A-share Chinese companies, but also Hong Kong portfolio. And six months ago, I, I moved to, to Skagen uh, in Norway my current role as a portfolio manager there. Yes, yeah, so I, th I think uh, part of it is my, my uh, educational background. As an engineer, I'm, I'm structured, I'm logical, uh, perhaps a little bit boring, uh, but uh, you know, it means that you have the, the skill set and the tools to, to handle large amounts of data, uh, which I think is important in terms of uh, screening process, uh, looking for uh, outliers and things like that. But I think in, in terms of personality, it's part of being a Scandinavian as well. I think we are, we are blessed with a, with a temperament that doesn't get too carried away. Um, so what I've found in my career is often that we are able to look at things with a little bit of a common sense uh, approach, uh, which has, has certainly helped me avoid some of the, the bigger uh, bubbles that I've seen in my career. So it's, uh, it's, it's hard to compare yourself against uh, any of those names, but I, but I think in terms of philosophy and approach, I think the way I define value investing for me is, is, is looking at things uh, and trying and find its intrinsic value. Um, I don't approach value investing as a, as a rules-based discipline. Uh, I don't take certain things away because they have a high earnings multiple or a high price to book. Uh, I try and look at the, the situation a little bit more holistically. Um, and, I, and, I, and I think that is important in terms of your temperament, your personality as well, to, to look at situations uh, not in a strict rule-based way. Uh, well, risk for, for myself as an investor in my fund and, and my, my fellow unit holders is, <laughs> is clearly the, the permanent loss of capital. I, th I think that's a very important uh, distinction. Uh, I was fortunate enough to work for a long time uh, with a client who, who had permanent capital and that really taught me the value of being able to look through volatility which I find an imperfect uh, measurement of risk. Well, what we found is that the ability to invest at times when the market was lacking access to capital gave us some of our best returns. Uh, so avoiding uh, losing it permanently is, is certainly how I define risk. No, as, as I said, uh, an engineering background and a simple mindset, uh, I think derivatives would, would complicate it. We, I mean, we, we do our bottom-up analysis. We do single stock investment and build a portfolio uh, based on bottom-up. Uh, we don't try and juice returns or take away certain parts of that risk. We have approached every investment as a, as a holistic risk-reward. And that's how we define sort of our expectations is, is on that. So we wouldn't want to, or we don't need to take away certain elements of that. Well, macro is, is, an, is an input variable in, in how we look at expectations and, and how our own expectations would measure up against the market. But we don't use macro as a screening criteria, for example. Well, again, I, I think as a, as a fund with a relatively unconstrained mandate, we're a global emerging market fund, there will always be uh, situations where the certain markets look more overvalued or undervalued than others, but that's just the starting point. That, that's a very small proportion of the time that we spend, uh, because again, I think that, that is more of a rules-based kind of screening process rather than trying to understand the companies that you've decided to, to invest in. Well, I think one's definition of concentration probably varies, but, but for us, a concentrated portfolio means one where every investment can matter for the outcome of the portfolio. So in practice, that means our portfolio has typically between 40 and 70 holdings. Well, I saw a presentation today where, where uh, one of the presenters said that value investors were better at buying than selling, and, and, and I think that's probably true. Um, it's very hard to accurately gauge the potential upside when, when you go into a new case. 
uh, and I have in myself experienced periods where I have held on to a stock beyond what I initially thought was the intrinsic value of the company. But again, it's a case-by-case -case basis. We, we look at new information, uh, but I think one of the things that my engineering background is a little bit of process and a little bit of discipline uh, helps uh, avoid uh, inaction there. We as a, as, a, as a usage firm, I mean, our job is to be fully invested. I mean, it's hard to always be fully invested because there is movement in the portfolio. But by definition, our investors come to us when they want to be in the equity market and we need to respect that. So in the same way that we don't use derivatives, we wouldn't purposely use cash as a market timing tool. I think, uh, as most investors do, we use a combination of quantitative and, and qualitative uh, methods. Of course, we, we look at uh, share price action, we look at changes in macro assumptions, we look at you know, where, where, where companies uh, are doing better or, or worse than they were a year ago. But I think most investors can do that. Uh, where we have found a lot of value is the willingness to look at complex situations. So we look at a lot of conglomerates, we look at a lot of spin-offs, um, we look at complicated situations where there may be a, uh, under earning parts of, the, of a group or something like that. And then finally, I think um, we have been in this business for 25 years. The team uh, has uh, worked together for varying degrees of time, but we have a library of 25 years worth of, of ideas. And we find a lot of our best ideas come from revisiting things that we have owned in the past. We look at the value chain, we look at competitors, we look at uh, customers, etc. I personally believe so. I think there are varying uh, views on that. But I think particularly when your investment philosophy is built on bottom-up stock-specific investments, I think it helps to understand how management sees that business going forward. And, and I think particularly important when it comes to things like capital allocation. You can have great businesses, and, and my experience in China, I have found wonderful business models with high returns, but when the reinvestment, where as a minority shareholder in China, you probably didn't have a lot of influence compared to in, in other markets, management can actually have a huge impact on, on, on the value of the company going forward. Uh, my favorite metric is, is up, upside to my, my estimate of intrinsic value. Um, we do all our own financial modeling. We do all our own uh, valuation work. Of course, we use a lot of inputs in terms of sources, etc. But the price target, the, the value that we see, that, that is proprietary to us. Um, I think, you know, again, we, we don't apply a rules-based way of, of building the portfolio. There will be times where we have no exposure to certain sectors, but it's not because we decide not to invest in them. Again, our fund is sector and country agnostic. We have an emerging markets mandate, which means that we, we look at things that are driven by that, that value creation in, in those markets. And that takes us to some very strange places sometimes. Well, I, I think uh, close to half of them are probably classified as errors uh, at certain points in time. But, but uh, I mean, I think, again, it comes back to a little bit of discipline. So I'm, I'm not a believer in rules-based portfolio or, or risk management, so I don't apply a stop loss to an idea, but certainly when the share price is moving in a direction that you can't explain, then you have to revisit that investment thesis. The value may still be there, but if you can't articulate how and when that is going to be crystallized, then, then I think you can be in for a very, very challenging time if you don't do something. So I think most people will probably go for the same books in this kind of interview on, on value investing, etc. But, but uh, so, some, of the, some of the books that I've gotten the most enjoyment out of as, as an investor in, in my personal journey have been reminiscence of a stock, uh, stock market operator and, and the money game, which I highly recommend, if only to, to understand other people's psyche.